Chapter 3, Legal Issues, Part 5. As we continue our discussion of the Fourth Amendment, it's important to discuss also the various exceptions to the warrant requirement of that amendment. If you recall from our last discussion, the Fourth Amendment includes two parts. The first part establishes the right to protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. The second part establishes how the government can go about getting a warrant. But the question is, does every search or seizure have to be accompanied by a warrant? In other words, are warrantless searches, searches and, or I should actually say searches and seizures, are warrantless searches and seizures permissible? The Supreme Court has said such searches are permissible. So warrantless searches are constitutional under certain circumstances. And so the Supreme Court has consistently said it would prefer the, the government first obtained a warrant before it searched or seized, but the court has recognized that there are many times when obtaining a warrant just isn't feasible. And so, therefore, it has permitted warrantless searches. It has said that certain warrantless searches are reasonable and certain, certain warrantless seizures are also reasonable. So when do we find such warrantless searches or seizures permissible? Well, there are various exceptions, and we're going to cover some, but not all of them. The most common search today is the consent search, even more common than searches that are accompanied by warrants. In fact, searches with warrants are probably uh, much less common, well not even probably, they are much less common than searches without warrants. So warrantless searches are actually more common today than warranted searches. Uh, the consent search being the most common. And so it's pretty clear to get an idea for you to conclude what a consent search is just from its name. It's a search that you've consented to. And so that doesn't mean that you have to say, yes, I'm signing a paper here and it's saying to the police that they are allowed to search me, my house, my car, whatever. You don't have to go that far to consent. It could just be handing over your bag to the police officer. It could just be kind of shrugging your shoulders when the police officer says, you mind if I search uh, your trunk? And you've popped the trunk, the trunk is open. And you've allowed the police officers to go back in your car and look inside the trunk. So consent you know, doesn't have to be um, you know, full-blown, written, any of those kinds of things. If you, if the police officer s sees you walking down the street and says, hey, mind if I take a look in your bag there? And you hand the bag to the police officer and let the police officer look inside it, you've consented. If the police officer pulls you over for a traffic violation and says, do you mind if I take a look in your trunk and you pop the trunk and let the police officer look, you've consented. If a police officer comes to your door, and you meet the officer out on the, the porch and close the door behind you and the police officer says that's kind of strange you don't mind if we take a look inside do you and you open the door and let the police officers inside and it's your house that you've consented so if they find in any of these if they find criminal evidence they can use it against you and about your only defense is going to be it was coerced and in order to show coercion, you have to show that the police officers really forced you to give them consent. You know, they put a, practically put a gun to your head and said, you don't mind if we look in your trunk. Well, we can expect that those situations, although they, they I guess, could happen, they rarely ever do. So you're probably not going to win if you consent it to a search. That evidence is going to get in. And so if you don't want that evidence to get in, you need to make it clear that you are not consenting. If the officers ignore your objections and search anyway, then at least your defense attorney has a chance to argue that the, that the search was illegal and the evidence should be thrown out later in court. Okay, but if you consent, you are waiving your rights under the Fourth Amendment, and you need to realize that. Also, it's important to note that the police officers are not obligated to tell you that you have the right to refuse the search. It's not like the Miranda warnings that we'll discuss later, where the police officers have to tell you certain things, like the right to an attorney, right to remain silent. For a consent search, they don't have to. And so if you're ignorant and don't know your rights, 
that's your tough luck. As long as there wasn't coercion, the police are probably going to be allowed to do what they do, and they know this. They know hardly anyone will ever refuse their request for a search. And I've talked to police officers and asked them about this, and I said, what would happen if somebody did say no? And they said, well, we just wouldn't search. But nobody ever says no. And so they rely on that. So be careful about consent searches. If you don't want your stuff searched, make it clear that you don't want it searched. Exigent circumstances are another exception. And what we mean by exigent circumstances uh, is really emergency circumstances, meaning it's just there's just no time for the police officers to get a warrant. Maybe they hear screams from inside in a, a house and it sounds like someone is being beaten and they're screaming for help. Well, we don't want the police officers to holler, hey, hold on, don't beat them anymore. I've got to go run to a judge and get a warrant. No, go through that door, door police officers. Help that person who's screaming. So in that situation, somebody's safety is at risk, somebody's health, maybe somebody's life, then yes, we want the police officers to proceed. Don't You don't have to stop and go get a warrant. Or... Uh, Maybe it's not a life or death situation, but it's a situation where the police officers are in hot pursuit and they don't have time to stop and go get a warrant. Or maybe it's a situation where the police officers know that the evidence is being destroyed. And so if they go and get a search warrant, the evidence is going to be all gone. But these are really special circumstances and the police are going to have to show that there were emergency circumstances. It just wasn't feasible for them to go stop and get a warrant before they proceeded. Plain view is another big category of warrantless searches. Here we could really say that it's not just plain view, plain sight, but it's also all of the senses. Now, I don't recall of ever hearing of any plain taste exception. It's not like police officers are out there licking evidence all over the place, although you do see in the movie sometimes a police officer will, you know, stick his or her finger into a pile of white powdery substance and then lick his finger or her finger and say, hmm, that's some pretty good stuff. I, I wouldn't, that's TV. I wouldn't recommend doing that in real life. Don't stick your fingers in some strange substance and taste it. Um, use your kit instead, your drug kit to analyze it. But anyway, Plain touch, I guess, could or plain taste, I guess, could be one of them. But we do certainly find plain sight, plain hearing, plain touching, plain smelling. So all the other senses, we just call, it's kind of awkward to say plain smelling, so we say plain, plain view. But what we ask in these situations are, was the officer lawfully in the position to observe through any of these senses what they observed? So if an officer pulls you over and smells lots of alcohol on your breath, in the car, all around, that's, that's fair game. As long as the initial stop was lawful, as long as they had a reason, a legal reason to stop you, once they approached your car and smelled your breath, that's plain smell. They didn't need a warrant to say, I smelled alcohol. Similarly, if you know, they ask you for your license and registration. You open your glove compartment and a kilo of cocaine falls out. They don't have to turn around and say, oh, you know, hurry up and hide that until I go get a search warrant. That's in plain view. As long as the traffic stop was good, you had the cocaine in your glove compartment. It falls out onto the floor when you opened it. Or maybe it was lying in the, in your, in the passenger seat or whatever. That's plain view. Police officers walking down the street and through your ground level window, you don't have your drapes pulled your curtains pulled, and the police officer is able to see you engaging in criminal activities, that's plain view. Plain touch, the officer's patting you down and feels a gun. And it's instantly recognizable. The officer doesn't have to fool around with his or her fingers to really figure out what it is. But it's instantly recognizable as a gun. That's plain touch. Okay, Plain hearing, the officer is walking down the street and you're shouting the details of your uh, upcoming drug deal from your side of the street to the other, to your friend on the other side of the street, and the officer hears that, hey, that's fair game. So plain view applies to any of these circumstances. Automobile exception, um, generally w the courts have said because of the nature of an automobile, the fact that it is mobile, the fact that you know it's 
out in public, used mostly in public, on public streets. Mostly people don't have their windows tinted, so people are able to see what's going on inside the car. So there's not a whole lot of privacy in that. It's also a regulated vehicle. You have to have a license. You have to have a license plate. You have to have a registration sticker. You have to have, um, in most states, an inspection done. That because of these things, there's less of an expectation of privacy in an automobile. So that doesn't mean you lose all expectation of privacy when you're in the automobile, but it does mean you don't have as much protection as you would in your house, for instance. And so I'm not going to go into all the details of the automobile exception. Your book goes into more details, but it's a pretty complicated doctrine. And so we really don't have the time here other than to say that the automobile often, because of its nature, uh, more warrantless searches are permitted of automobiles than of homes and persons, et cetera, et cetera. The Terry stop, we're going to learn about this in our next PowerPoint presentation. Uh, but for now, just take it um, on faith that when I say a Terry stop, I mean a stop and frisk. An officer pats you down. It's a very quick search, but it's for often for the officer's safety. Um, it's not very intrusive. It's going to be over in a little bit, but it is a search, as we'll find out, and it is usually almost always never accompanied uh, by a warrant. It's usually warrantless, if not always warrantless. Border searches, we recognize that every country has a right to protect its borders. Now that means both the physical borders, you know, the border between Canada and the United States and Mexico and the United States, but it's also your first entry point into the country is a kind of border. So if you fly from Amsterdam to Washington, D.C., even though Washington, D.C. doesn't border on, physically border any foreign country, that is your first entry back into the United States. And so we allow, we recognize that the government has more authority to protect its security, and so therefore we allow more latitude to conduct searches at the border. A search incident to an arrest. We want to protect the safety of the police officers, so if the police officers place you under arrest, they can search the area immediately under your control. So if they search you in the living room of your home, they could reasonably search the living room, the area where maybe you could hurry up and jump up and grab a gun and do some harm to them. Um, but that doesn't wouldn't justify them going into your bedroom and searching through your drawers if you're out in the living room. But certainly the area immediately around you and on you can be searched, and that can, is done without a warrant. 